over here? Something. Okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this evening's episode of Talking Point. Today in our studios, we have a distinguished guest whose name is a household name in the Bangladeshi community in this country. He has been to Salford, Durham. He has served the Royal Air Force. He has served the Defense Ministry and also in the Cabinet Ministry. Now, he has also served as the first Bangladeshi British High Commissioner to Bangladesh. You must have guessed this is Mr. Anwar Chaudhary. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Um, it's good to be on your show. I've heard quite a lot about it, so thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming and making time today. Today is a working day, and yet yes. you could uh, escape from for an, and come. Well, I've come straight from the office, so oh, I great. probably look a little uh, worse for wear. <laughs> I apologize. Presently, you are director at FCO, and you look after the organizations, institutions, or whatever. Yes. Uh, I, in fact, I have moved on from that job. Uh -huh. um, I am now in preparation for further posting. Right. Um, but the job you're talking in about, I was director in Outside or inside? Inside. Okay. Oh, sorry. Out, uh, you mean out, out, of, out the of the country? Out of the country, yeah. Oh, it'll be out of the country, yes. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, That's not breaking news, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm afraid you'll have to wait <laughs> until the proper announcements, <laughs> okay. uh, which uh, will, will come in due course. Um, um, yes, but the, the job you were talking about, which I did previously um, on returning from Dhaka, was Director International uh, Security and Institutions, mm -hmm. which... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, looked after policy uh, in the uh, UN, mm -hmm. uh, Commonwealth, um, all the other international institutions, uh, mm -hmm. as well as democracy and uh, human rights and, and, and so on. But that's been, that's been a while now. That, it, that, that also include uh, OIC, this Organization of Islamic Countries? No, because we are not a member of uh, OIC, uh -huh. but um, uh, if we looked at OIC, it would have been from that directorate. Mm -hmm. because not even observer? Because uh, yeah, I th I'm not sure where we are on the observer status. I think we, we, may, ha we may be uh, yes. observer now. Um, because uh, in Britain, we have a sizable uh, community. Yes. Yes, we do, and I think um, we are very interested in the OIC. We mm -hmm. we we do we do we do look at um, what what's happening there. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we take an interest um, in almost every international institution uh, there is, and I think Britain. Uh, I don't know if it holds the record. It probably does, as the country that belongs to most international <laughs> institutions. Of course, it keeps you busy. <laughs> it keeps us busy, but. Um, uh, you know, and, and in some areas it's vital. We're a member of the UN Security Council, and uh, membership mm -hmm. of that is a very privileged uh, position right. for us, uh, and it's important right. that we give it the attention it requires. Well, we, 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 we took the plunge and we went into the business, yes. but I really wanted to ask yes. you yes. your very exciting journey from uh, Shunam Ganj to Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Uh, yes. Can I you? Uh, yes, yes. I, I think that journey uh, ha has been covered before. P people probably know I it. Know, I know. Probably know it uh, even better than I do now. <laughs> uh, but as, as everybody knows, you have um, to scratch your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, because somebody will phone up and correct me and say, "Look, actually, you were over there." <laughs> uh, no, I mean it's. Um, uh, uh, it is. I've had a fascinating uh, journey of life up to now. Um, born in a village in Bangladesh, and, mm -hmm. and then uh, came to this country, uh, you know, around 10. Um, went through, grew up here, um, and then worked in every every sector of government, basically, in this country. Uh, and then now um, uh, in the Foreign Office. So it is this stuff that kind of stories uh, are, yeah. are made of. And I've been an extremely lucky individual mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. to have gone through that you know um, I don't think you can you can imagine when you're a boy in a village that you're gonna come back one day as the ambassador to uh, you know to uh, the same country to the same country representing uh, <laughs> representing your adopted country Great Britain uh, well it, uh, it speaks a lot about you and your ability and also about the the world that we live in today it yes. has changed so much. Yes, it also speaks about luck, <laughs> yes. because I think um, abilities are absolutely important and gets you um, 
further than uh, than you otherwise would. Um, uh, but sometimes um, things fall in place. You know, my uh, life's ambition when I started was to try and help people of developing countries mm -hmm. through engineering, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. build power stations. That's why right. I studied engineering. Right. But I had this this love, this uh, almost unexplainable affection for, for Bangladesh, mm -hmm. this uh, umbilical cord, if you want to call it that, yeah. this emotion for it, um, that kept on... Bangladesh was a Naritan. Naritan. Uh, <laughs> that's a good word for it. Uh, so even when I was working in the Ministry of Defense or the Royal Air Force, there was this thing that's kept on pulling me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to do power stations, but um, I managed to, um, as, I, as I'm fond of saying, managed to serve a country mm -hmm. I love, this country, my, well, my country, well, in, we in the country we I was Chinese born. to do our nuclear power stations. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a part of an investment. <laughs> you know. Well, when you were appointed, uh, the BBC remarked that governments promise to create a more ethnically diverse foreign office. Yes. This was the evidence to reflect the UK's multicultural society. Right. How did you see this at that time? Well, I, um, and I came I mean up... What's Mr. Robin Cook? Uh, uh, no, the Foreign Secretary at that time uh, was Jack Straw when, uh -huh. I, when, I, when I was um, appointed um, High Commissioner. Uh, but obviously, uh, Robin Cook famously uh, set the, the ethical foreign policy right. uh, strand of, um, of thinking. Um, but uh, we don't have political appointments in the Foreign Office. Um, I mean, there are one or two, but those are quite well known. Our service is based on merit, so you mm -hmm. have to compete. Mm -hmm. And I had come, th come up through the civil service, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. before the Foreign Office, I was director at the Cabinet Office. Um, so, so the way I saw it, and the way I still see it, is that that is the right approach that we should. Uh, we, you know, our society in England should be represented uh, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in our diplomatic postings and, and right. so forth. But only but by, foreign office is by selecting... As, uh, uh, all the school tie connections. Uh, well, Cambridge. less and less so, I would think, <laughs> because what we're trying to do is um, try and um, select people for their talents and for their ability, and it's on a competitive basis. In fact, very recently, uh, um, I was taking part in a um, in a recruitment campaign where I was at Edinburgh and in Glasgow, mm -hmm. um, where we're trying to recruit more. Uh, people from uh, black or ethnic uh, minority uh, backgrounds. Um, to the Foreign Office? And, uh, to the Foreign Office, yes, absolutely. But we are also very clear uh, that we operate on basis of merit, mm -hmm. on, on mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think we need to worry about that because in our community, in the British Bangladeshi community, uh, in, the eth in, you know, in, the, in the black community, in the minority communities that we have, uh, we have plenty of talent. Um, and particularly in the Bangladeshi community, where mm -hmm. I think the two most senior uh, diplomats um, uh, in Britain are both of um, uh, British Bangladeshi origins. You were uh, mentioning the other gentleman. Yes, uh, my good friend Asif Ahmed, who I've mentioned mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. now our ambassador mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Manila, in the Philippines. Um, That's a senior appointment, isn't it? Yes, yes, it's a senior, it's a senior appointment, as, uh, as was Bangladesh. Um, so both from British Bangladeshi uh, origins, it's a, it's a matter of pride, certainly for me, um, that that is the case. Well, uh, I have also uh, read somewhere that you enjoy cricket and bridge and uh, Bangladeshi cooking. And you know, right now we are, NTV is hosting or rather conducting a Cooking Queen 2013. Right. Competition reality. O only a queen, though. Not only a queen, <laughs> no kings. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, because the country is ruled by the queen. <laughs> ah, well, that makes sense. Okay. So it's interesting that uh, I have a guest today who is also interested in English cooking. Yeah. Uh, how much of cricket do you enjoy? Do you play cricket right now? On, on cooking, by the way, I must make clear that um, it's eating I enjoy, not, <laughs> not, not you know, you I enjoy like the cuisine, yeah, eating the cuisine. it, not preparing it. <laughs> so that's slightly different. Uh, yeah. Cricket I love, uh -huh. uh, but I, I'm a pretty rubbish cricketer, I must say, though, much as I... This is, uh, this is kind of how life is, you know. Uh, sometimes what you love most, uh, you have no, no talent Time. in. Uh, or no talent in, you know. Um, and cricket is one of those things. Um, I used to, um, in school, 
uh, play cricket and I used to mm -hmm. bowl for my school occasionally. Um, but I haven't played it since and I was a pretty mediocre player <laughs> all the way. Uh, well, you enjoy Bangladeshi music, uh, poetry, and that you are love, a yes. very well sought guest of honor at Bangladeshi events. Yes, well, I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, I'm extremely lucky that um, I've up and up with this uh, not but, but an extraordinary uh, kind of relationship with the you know, over half a million British Bangladeshi mm -hmm. people in this country. And I've said it before in, in, in on, on occasions that it feels like an extended family. Um, and that's how people sort of treat me and sort of, um, you know, how, how we interact. And, and, and I, I therefore also get a very privileged view of our community because I, uh, I see them in so many places mm -hmm. and have very frank it's, it's almost like w when, when you talk to a family member or a friend, we, we, we talk in that way. And you get this unique view of, of where the British Bangladeshi community is here, here in the UK. You, you feel that you are accepted everywhere? In the I I, I, across the I boat? certainly feel like yep. uh, these are my friends. Yep. Uh, and and um, you know, as I say, I feel extremely privileged and, and of sometimes moved uh, to see how people behave, mm -hmm. behave back in the same way. You know, it was from old ladies who would, you know, sort of sneakily hand me some supari, you know, say, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, to young kids uh, who will come and talk to me about, mm -hmm. you know, something they've been watching on TV, uh, mm -hmm. to sort of graduates, to restaurant owners, to uh, every, everybody. And, and that is uh, something that I, I've been thinking about a lot because I don't think not many people have been this lucky to, mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. that sort of a relationship. Yes, great. The kind of stuff that uh, icons are made of. I don't know, the kind, of, kind of stuff that keeps you happy, I think, <laughs> when you feel <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, when you were leaving Bangladesh uh, at the end of your tenure in yes. May 2008, yes. you, you, your statement, uh, farewell Bangladesh, Right. stay well, yes. see you. Yes. Farewell uh, Bangladesh, I remember. Yes, yes. yes. Because that's uh, this was quoted in uh, one of the newspapers that yes. I was researching. Yes. And uh, this is a very, very emotional statement. So yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Bangladesh is a very emotional place. It's, <laughs> it's difficult not to, as, uh, as proven, not to be misty-eyed when you, when you leave Bangladesh. Uh, and this is not uh, from somebody of my background who obviously has a connection. Right. Uh, but when you talk to um, colleagues, you know, whether it's the American ambassador or the Chinese or, or the mm -hmm. Australian, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Bangladesh has the same sort of grab on, on, on those people's hearts uh, as it did on mine. And the airport scene was very interesting because we had gone to some effort mm -hmm. <laughs> not to, not to uh, make known just exactly when my flight is because mm -hmm. there were some security concerns, obviously. And uh, also, you know, didn't want it to be, you know, become a chaotic scene at the airport. Um, but as it happened, um, I, on purpose, didn't go in through the VIP lounge because right. we expected people, you know, there might be crowd or somebody, something. So I went through, I was taken through a different route. Um, it, and was then it was a British Airways flight, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a British Airways flight. <laughs> and then, um, uh, this is just to avoid any, any, mm -hmm. sort of, mm -hmm. um, any sort of interaction because we thought, you know, this might not be, um, might not be right for security concerns and all that. And then suddenly, in front of me, as I was going into them, this, uh, quite accidentally, there was all these cameras. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, about a hundred or so, mm -hmm. um, hundred or so people there who had turned up, I don't know how they knew, who had turned up to say goodbye. And, and I couldn't help it. When I looked into their eyes, you know, you just could not help um, but feel really moved. Moved, absolutely, yes. Well, on this uh, very <coughs> emotional and yes. uh, sensitive point, uh, we will be taking a break. Sure. But uh, when we come back from the break, we would like to talk about, uh, you were working as the director of uh, Foreign Office, uh, and your area of interest was policy for radical change in government governance, see? Yes. Uh, if I'm not too inquisitive, uh, I would like to know what's that, see? But that, of, of course, after yes. the break. <laughs> sure. Right. Uh, thank you very much for being with us.
we have to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Apnara Dikchen, Talking Point. Show Jonne, Mahbubin Ku Accountants.